don't like Obamacare repeal, but other issues may sway midterms. The bad news for Republicans, their base doesn't like their plan for repealing Obamacare, and they don't think President Donald Trump's planned tax overhaul will help them. The good news for Republicans, it might not matter when the 2018 midterms roll around. That's a key takeaway from the latest political Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health poll, which finds the policy fights consuming Washington aren't necessarily what's on voters' minds. As Republican leaders struggle to patch together 50 votes for an Obamacare repeal bill in the Senate next week, the poll results indicate the next congressional election may be settled by a range of issues broader than the fight over the 2010 health care law. The race, if it was held tomorrow, Health care will be one of the big issues, but other issues could decide this race on both sides, said Bob Blendon, a Harvard expert on health care policy and public opinion who designed the poll with Politico. Trump and Republican leaders have frequently said they'd need to finish work on Obamacare repeal before moving on to a tax overhaul. But the Politico Harvard poll finds the tax agenda also lacks public support. That could complicate the GOP's ability to advance an effort that Trump has billed as a cakewalk. I think after health care, taxes are going to be so easy, Trump told Christian Broadcasting Network founder Pat Robertson in an interview broadcast Thursday. Health care is very hard. Health care is hard because you'll do something a little bit this way, and you'll pick up that final vote and you lose four votes over here. But the general public, and even Republicans, are pessimistic about Trump's still hazy plans for overhauling the tax code. The proposal, largely comprised of tax cuts along with promises to eliminate tax breaks for the wealthy and special interests, is favored by just 24 percent of the general public and opposed by 62 percent. Still, other issues right now hold more weight with voters. Trump's efforts to protect the country from terrorism, 39 percent, his Obamacare replacement effort, 37 percent, and his proposed budget, 34 percent, will rank among the most important issues when considering which congressional candidate to vote for in 2018, said registered voters surveyed in the poll. Ranking closely behind our allegations about the White House's involvement with the Russian government, Trump's crackdown on undocumented immigrants and his ban on travel from some Middle Eastern countries. The top issue for registered voters who said they plan to vote for a Republican candidate in 2018 is terrorism, 47 percent, well ahead of illegal immigration, 32 percent, and Obamacare replacement, 31 percent. For registered voters planning to support a Democrat, Obamacare replacement, 46 percent, ranks as a top issue just behind allegations of White House ties to Russia and Trump's decision to withdraw the United States from the Paris Climate Change Pact. Both parties see an advantage in the Obamacare repeal effort. For Republicans, it would be the fulfillment of a longtime pledge to scrap an onerous health care law. For Democrats, who are energized by the health care issue after suffering through years of Obamacare attacks it's their chance to tie Republicans to an even more unpopular plan. There's a clear lack of enthusiasm on the Republican side for their party's Obamacare replacement, which is being revised and massaged in the tougher-than-expected effort to get it through the Senate. Just 20 percent of Republicans said they would support a plan providing financial assistance for health coverage to a lot fewer people, while about 42 percent would accept a plan subsidizing somewhat fewer people that saves taxpayer money. And by a slight margin, Republicans oppose their party's plans to roll back enrollment in Medicaid, a program covering nearly 75 million low-income Americans. Only about one in three Republicans favor allowing insurers to charge more to people with pre-existing medical conditions, a practice that was banned by Obamacare and has complicated the repeal effort. Conservative Republicans have sought to ease that protection to bring down health insurance costs for healthier people but they haven't been able to craft a policy that would prevent costs from skyrocketing for sick people. From the core issue that they're trying to push, Republican lawmakers, have lost this battle, Blinden said. Their own constituency isn't with them in this current debate. The poll was taken in mid-June, after House Republicans passed their Obamacare replacement and before Senate Republicans released their original bill.
which the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office projected would result in 22 million fewer people with health insurance over a decade. Senate leaders issued an updated version of the bill on Thursday, with a new CBO score expected early next week. On taxes, Republicans are about evenly split on Trump's overhaul, with 40% favoring it and 41% opposing it. Just 35% of Republicans think it will help them and 45% said it would make no difference. However, 62% think it would help the economy and create more jobs. Democrats are overwhelmingly against the tax plan, with 85% opposed, along with 60% of independents. Meanwhile, a majority of survey respondents disapproved of Trump's withdrawal from the Paris Climate Treaty, but opinions were sharply split by party. Just 30% favored the decision to leave the landmark 2015 Climate Accord originally signed by 195 countries, while 53% disapproved. However, 65% of Republicans favored the decision while 91% of Democrats and 54% of independents opposed it. The survey was conducted by SSRS, an independent research company, for Politico and Harvard from June 14 to 18. It used cell phones and landlines among a nationally representative sample of 1,011 U.S. adults. Trump campaign's digital director agrees to meet with House Intel Committee. Brad Parscale, who ran the digital operation for the Donald Trump presidential campaign, said Friday that he will voluntarily meet later this month with the House Intelligence Committee, one of the bodies investigating Russia's role in the 2016 election. I have accepted a request from the House Intelligence Committee to meet with them for a voluntary interview, and I look forward to sharing with them everything I know. Parscale said in a statement he tweeted Friday morning. Parscale, however, said he is unaware of any Russian involvement in the digital and data operations of Trump's campaign, which he said utilized the exact same digital marketing strategies that are used every day by corporate America. The only collaboration I am aware of in the Trump digital campaign was with staff provided to the campaign by Facebook, Google and Twitter, he added. Those experts in digital marketing worked side by side with our teams from Giles Parscale, the Republican National Committee, and Cambridge Analytica to run a professional and winning campaign. In an email to Politico, Parscale said he was scheduled to visit the House panel at the end of the month before recess. Parscale now works with the pro Trump outside group America First Policies, a nonprofit started by top campaign aides to support the president's agenda. Trump confidant Roger Stone was also scheduled to appear before the House Intelligence Committee on July 24, but his attorney, Robert Bussell, said in an interview that a GOP staffer called Thursday and postponed the session indefinitely because Democrats requested more time to review documents. Michael Caputo, who resigned from the Trump campaign last June, did speak to the panel on Friday. The FBI and Congressional Intelligence Committees are probing Russia's meddling in the presidential campaign, including possible collusion between Trump associates and Moscow. The Senate Judiciary Committee has invited Donald Trump Jr. to testify before the panel following recent revelations that Trump Jr. met with a woman during the height of the campaign last summer who was described to him as a Russian government attorney. According to an email exchange Trump Jr. released on Tuesday, he was told the woman had information that would incriminate Hillary Clinton as part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. I f it's what you say I love it especially later in the summer, Trump Jr. replied, in part. He has said the meeting was brief, and no information on Clinton came out of it. White House senior adviser Jared Kushner and then-campaign chairman, Paul Manafort also attended the meeting with Russian lawyer Natalia Vazelnitskaya and Russian-American lobbyist Renat Dekman. Russian-American lobbyist says he was in Trump Jr.'s meeting. A Russian-American lobbyist says he attended a June 2016 meeting with President Donald Trump's son, marking another shift in the account of a discussion that was billed as part of a Russian government effort to help the Republicans' White House campaign. Renat Akhmetshin confirmed his participation to the Associated Press on Friday. 
The meeting heightened questions about whether Trump's campaign coordinated with the Russian government during the election, which is the focus of federal and congressional investigations. In emails posted by Donald Trump Jr. earlier this week, an associate who arranged the meeting said a Russian lawyer wanted to pass on negative information about Democrat Hillary Clinton and stated plainly that the discussion was part of a Russian government effort to help the GOP candidate. While Trump Jr. has confirmed that the Russian attorney was in the meeting he did not disclose Akhmet Shin's presence. The president's son has tried to discount the meeting, saying that he did not receive the information he was promised. Ahmed Shin said the meeting was not substantive and he actually expected more serious discussion. I never thought this would be such a big deal to be honest, he told App. Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law and current White House senior advisor, and then-campaign chairman Paul Manafort also attended the meeting. Asked about Ahmed Shin and his possible participation in the June 2016 meeting, Mitteri Peskov, spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin, told reporters on Friday, we don't know anything about this person. Trump Republican senators must come through on health care bill. President Donald Trump turned up the pressure Friday morning on Senate Republicans, urging them via Twitter to make good on a years-old campaign promise by passing legislation to repeal and replace Obamacare. GOP leadership in the Senate has introduced legislation that would undo former President Barack Obama's signature health care health care law, but the repeal and replace measure has proven controversial even within the Republican caucus and it is unclear whether the bill will be able to muster enough support to pass. Republicans' senators are working hard to get their failed Obamacare replacement approved. I will be at my desk, pen in hand. Trump who is in France attending Bastille Day celebrations with French President Emmanuel Macron, posted on Twitter Friday morning. So imt rep senators, under leadership of at Senate Maj LDR McConnell get health care plan approved. After seven yocto seconds of o care disaster, must happen. The president also praised Vice President Mike Pence, who played a key role in shepherding the House's repeal and replace legislation to passage, for his work on the Senate bill. Trump also warned Republicans that they must make good on their longtime campaign promise to do away with Obamacare. After all of these years of suffering through Obamacare, Republican senators must come through as they have promised. Trump wrote. At VP Mike Pence is working hard on health care and getting our wonderful Republican senators to do what is right for the people. In a Friday morning interview on Fox News's Fox and Friends, Counselor to the President Kellyanne Conway said Pence has been our greatest asset up on Capitol Hill all along, but particularly this week, as GOP leaders have worked to revise their health care legislation to appease more members. Democrats, Conway said, have been very unserious in these negotiations and have only presented options deemed by Republicans as unworkable. And while the fate of the repeal and replace measure ultimately rests with Senate Republicans, Conway said the president has been involved throughout the process. As you know, President Trump is very hands-on. He works the phones. He hosts meetings. We've had any number of members of Congress and senators here, governors, frankly, over time. We've also had Obamacare victims. We've had drug manufacturers, she said. This is a seven-and-a-half-year sinking battleship and those turn slowly. But the president is always involved. That said, it's up to the Senate to put this legislation on his desk and he's made very clear he has pen in hand. Support for the repeal and replace bill in the Senate has broken down on either end of the GOP political spectrum, much as it did in the House before a last-minute compromise was forged. Senate conservatives, like Senator Rand Paul, Arkey, have balked at the bill because, they say, it does not go far enough in undoing Obamacare while moderate GOP lawmakers, like Sense, Susan Collins, R. Maine, and Dean Haler, R. Nevada, have said the measure's cuts are too deep for them to support. With a path to passage still unclear on the legislation, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced this week that he would keep the chamber in session through the first two weeks of its scheduled August recess. With a narrow, 52-seat majority in the Senate, 
Republicans can afford to lose the votes of just two GOP lawmakers and still pass with the benefit of Pence's tie-breaking vote. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, R. California, has said chamber will go on its scheduled recess but will return to Washington should the Senate manage to pass a bill. Any legislation passed by the Senate would need to be reconciled with the House version before it can be sent to the president's desk to be signed into